Today, I had the esteemed pleasure of presenting my lived experience living with my schizophrenic mother with the educators at Rubin County Elementary School. As an Ending the Silence presenter representing the National Alliance on Mental Illness, together we can end the stigma towards mental illness. This is my story, my journey untold. I broke my silence. A lot of information, right? <laughs> Helpful information. My name is Eugene Hall. I'm a multimillionaire, CEO, mom, and boss. But that's not who defines who I am in front of you. You see, I'm a child of a mother that went through depression for many years, untreated, on an island where resources were not available. I am from the United States of Virgin Islands. I'm a mental health advocate for Florida, Georgia, and the entire Caribbean nation. I'm an award-winning author. My story hit the Amazon's bestseller list six months after its release. It's called Journey Untold, Twisted Love. My mother struggled with mental illness. It's a story written from my viewpoint as a child. When I originally wrote this book, I wrote it to another child who was going through similar things that I've been through and can know that they were not alone. I had no idea at the time when I wrote this book that it can help children, teens, as well as adults. You see, my mother, rest her soul, she heard seven voices in her head. She bathed with rubbing alcohol because she was manic and feared germs. For 15 years of my life, I was bullied every single day for no other reason than my mother had a mental illness. At that time, the word mental illness did not even exist on that island. She was just, what? Crazy. And because there was no education, awareness, and very little support for my mother, my mother went depressed for 12 years of my young life. What did that look like to me? I saw my mother sad. I saw my mother drift away slowly. But the moment that I realized that everyone realized that my mother had a real problem is when she was running behind me screaming, she's going to kill me. That's right. At the age of 12 years old, my mother was prepared to take my young life away from me. I remember running, screaming, thinking to myself, what did I do to set my mother off? No clue. And when I tell you that God is an amazing God, at that very moment that she said that, the very first thought that came into my mind was, God, please save me today. Lo and behold, a truck carrying some painters grabbed me by my collar, but in my young mind, I thought the angels had come and grabbed me and pulled me in the truck and saved me that day from my mother. You see, I have four children. My first child is bipolar. He's 31 years old, and he self-medicates, which is negative coping. My second son went through depression between the age of 14 and 21. Today he's 25 years old with his own clothing line successful. My third son was born with autism. Brilliant, PhD level education at 12th grade. Brilliant, can't socialize for nothing. But he's working at Kroger, that's a major accomplishment for him while going to university. My daughter was diagnosed with autism at the age of 14, four years ago when we moved to Georgia. And I am grateful for y'all teachers, and let me tell you why. It was because of an educator that brought it to my attention that we have a child in this classroom that everyone looked at as the model student, but she was the child and would not raise her hand, would not express she does not understand, 
and she was getting lost in the system. She was failing ninth grade, and thank God for a special education teacher and a special education counselor. We now have the services for her. She's in a small classroom environment. She's an honor roll student. She's 17 years old. She has her own corporation, and she makes $100,000 a year. All because of one teacher that made a difference. And the same thing happened to me. By the age of 14, I was done. I was done because these students would actually take the time to pee in a balloon and throw it at me and my mother. That would take the time to pick up rocks on the street and throw it at us just because my mom was different. It was a ninth grade teacher, my honors English teacher, that noticed that I was drifting away. I cut my hair down to an inch. I didn't know what else to do. I was crying out for help. But everyone told me to let it go. How do you let go that your mother is trying to kill you? Three months later, your grandfather passed away. Your father doesn't want to take on the responsibility of you. I'm left to raised by my grandmother who has just lost her husband. She has a sixth grade education and 52 years old. But my honest English teacher said to me, young lady, I don't know what's going on with you, but I'm not going to let you fail. And she took me under her wing every afternoon and she made sure that I passed. And I say this to you because how many of you have students in the classroom that you're concerned about to this day? I show of hands. How many of you have teach, um, parents that you want to bring this information to, but the parents aren't listening or don't want to believe what you're saying? By show of hands. I was that parent. When my first son got his diagnosis, he was actually oppositional defiant disorder. He didn't listen to authority. I didn't want to take on that because my mother had a label. I didn't want my children to have a label too because in my view, a label didn't look good, did it? But I came to grips because at the end of the day, I love my children. I want to see my child succeed. I'm also a liaison between the parent, the student, and the teacher to get that child help. Because what parents don't realize is that the special education system actually has a lot of funding for children to help us with our children, doesn't it? And I'm grateful because my daughter gets before, during, after school care, she gets extra classes, she gets resource classes. She's a proven statistics that special education works. If anything that I want you to leave with today is that I want you to turn to that student that is quiet. Turn to that student that is having behavioral problems. Because believe it or not, the student that is given the most problem, something else bigger than that is happening inside. And a simple pull to the side with the words, are you okay? Do you need to talk? What is going on with you? Tell me. Those three sentences could change a child's life for the rest of their life. Now looking at me, can you say that I have a mental health disorder? Do I look like I have a mental health disorder? I have just overcame anxiety. Believe it or not, I could not public speak years ago. <laughs> My arms would shake, I would stutter, I would feel like I'm about to pass out, have a heart attack, but here I am today because therapy does work. I'm also successfully living with attention deficit disorder. 
That's how I'm able to run seven businesses a day because I can't do one task at a time. So I hope that this presentation has opened your eyes towards mental health and that despite the fact of someone living with a mental health disorder, compassion, love, kindness, understanding, education, and awareness know that recovery is possible. They can lead a successful life. My children are successful, and so am I. Thank you for the time.